Improperly storing your inflatable kayak will destroy it. Here's how I avoid all the heartache. It comes from ruining an inflatable kayak. First of all, it's best practices before long-term storing it to clean it thoroughly using appropriate soaps such as Dawn dish soap and boat cleaning soaps. If you want a full list of the tools and the soap that you need to properly clean an inflatable kayak, I'll leave a video link down in the description as well as right here, here, somewhere, wherever it pops up. All right, once you've cleaned it, it's time to let it dry. And I found this to be the biggest pain with inflatable kayaks. I've been letting this kayak dry for at least two hours now, and it just seems like every time I pick it up, new water appears. So here's the best practice. Number one, dump all the water out that you can. Once that you get all of that water out, I took a sponge and began soaking it up and squeezing it out. If you've got like a big beach towel, that also works really well. Just soak up as much water as you can, and then you need to let it air dry. And in order to do this, I found that it's best to wedge either a paddle in between the floor and the sides actually. So I'll like deflate the floor or deflate the sides and everything and then use a paddle to allow the air to really get in there and circulate underneath because when the sides set on the floor, it just holds all the water in between and it doesn't allow it to escape. And that's where it'll begin to mold and just absolutely ruin your inflatable kayak. Now that you've got it dry, like this one, it's time to check out if there are any rips, any tears, any holes that you need to patch because now that it's clean and dry, that's the time to patch it. I know this doesn't have any rips or tears in it because I just aired it up. It wasn't leaking anywhere. It's good to go. Now it's time to completely deflate it and roll it up. When you fold an inflatable kayak, that crease in the fold can dramatically decrease the life of your inflatable kayak and that's another way that it can get destroyed just by simply storing it. Now I know a lot of guys who actually don't deflate it and they just leave it semi-inflated throughout the year and that's absolutely fine as long as you've got the space to do that you see the reason that inflatable kayaks are so loved is because you can roll them up and store them in a much smaller area but if you have the space that might be a good option is just to inflate it say 60 70 percent and then leave it there this allows the air to expand and contract because it actually has the space to do that all right if you deflated it and rolled it up it's time for the next step, and that's to find a good quality storage bag. Now, luckily with the Wilderness Systems iAttack 110, it came with an excellent storage bag that allows for a little bit of airflow, and it's just got good quality materials that can handle a little bit of abuse. Not a lot, but a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and put this kayak in the bag. That way it'll be ready for the next trip, or if I don't ever get to it in the summertime, it'll still be in great quality when I open it back up again next year. Now, a few storage tips. Number one, you wanna keep it out of direct sunlight. You wanna keep it out of the extreme temperatures and you wanna keep it in a dry place. This is because those extremes and the mold that grows in a damp, moist environment and then the sun will eat away and destroy your inflatable kayak if you store it in anywhere else that's not a cool, dry, shady area. And this goes for the people that also just semi inflate their kayak, you still wanna store it in a cool, dry, shady area. And if you have ever tried airing up an inflatable kayak, you know it's a pain. And I tested out two ways to see which one is the best, man versus machine. You can find out right here in this video. Can't wait to see you there.